Praise the Lord, new life. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited about the revival that is happening and glad to be a part of it. Uh, thank God for his patience allowing me to stick around to see it actually happen. Amen. Let's get into the word of the Lord directly. Let's go into the book of Psalms, chapter 37. We're going to actually read two uh, places in scripture. The first will be in Psalms, chapter 37. And the second will be in Numbers, chapter 21. Psalms chapter 37, we're going to read two verses of scripture there. In verse 23, it reads this. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And then in Numbers chapter 21, and beginning in verse 4. And actually just verse 4. Numbers chapter 21. And verse 4 it reads, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And for a title, our steps are ordered. Our steps are ordered. Let's go to God right now in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness and mercy towards us, O God. Thank you, O God, for your tender kindness, O God, and your grace, Lord Jesus. And thank you also for your correction and judgment, Lord God, that you've made us right. And, O God, you set us, set us on the path to heaven, Lord God. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. We pray right now, O God, that you would encourage the hearts of us, Lord God, tonight. That we will believe you and trust you, O oh God, and remain on this path that you've given us, O oh God, knowing that you are perfect and you're good. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Our steps are ordered. Um, I, I'm actually a uh, somewhat of a fan of technology to some extent. Maybe some things. Not a lot of things. I do appreciate technology, though. Um, I'm also weary of how you use it. Um, so I think that's something that we ought to consider. But uh, technology is good um, if you use it for good things. Uh, for example, we have GPS systems in our cars now. If you don't, you may have it on your smartphone. If you have one of those phones that still flips up, you may not have it. Um, you may have it, but you probably don't. Um, but that's okay. Um, you know, and then some cars actually have this because... Uh, at least in my line of work, I do a lot of traveling. I travel about 90 miles per day on average, seven days a week, and I don't work on s Sunday at least. On Saturdays, I may work a half day from time to time. So that means throughout the week, I'm traveling probably 100 miles per day in city because I have a lot of clients to see and I'm uh, just going about doing what I do. I, I work until I can't anymore sometimes and I don't know where I'm going. Oftentimes, I'll get a client, and they may be in Timbuktu somewhere, and I've never actually been to Timbuk Timbuktu specifically. I've probably passed by it in how much I've traveled, but I do have a GPS system. And my GPS system, I use it every time I get a client. Even if I kind of know the area, um, I'll use that GPS system, and it'll guide me. And I thank God for this voice-guided system. I wouldn't be very good with a map. Um, it wouldn't do me well trying to read a map and drive at the same time anyway, and I'll probably uh, crash trying to look at that map. So I appreciate my GPS system. And th my car doesn't have this, but some cars do. They also have these cameras on cars now, some of the more expensive cars and maybe some of the not as expensive cars, I don't know. But they have cameras all around the car. My car just has one in the back. I could back up and see where I'm going. But some, car some cars actually have a camera. I was reading about a car that uh, it can look maybe it has a camera on the top, the sides, the bottoms, all over the place. So it knows where you are and where it's going. And it, what it can do is as you're driving, it can see pedestrians about to cross the street. And it can, it can make adjustments. And if you're about to go over potholes, it can... It can adjust the car. It can do all types of things. Um, that's because of technology. And so with this technology, the GPS system and all of those things can help us get to a destination a little bit more easily. We don't have to wander around and wonder where we're going. We have Google Maps and we have uh, uh, Apple, if that works. Uh, we have um, all of these various things that we can use to get us to our destination. And that's a good thing. Now, if man is wise enough, um, to make sure at least we had maps at one point in time and we have this 
global positioning system that will help us get to our destination because typically uh, we'll get lost if we don't know exactly where we're going. If it's our first time there, God is wise enough to give, give us the ability to make it to heaven. He has a way. He has a road. He has a map. He has some things planned out and mapped out that will get us to our destination. None of us probably have actually gone into heaven. Most of us at least have not gone into heaven or we don't know how to get there uh, without the map that God has uh, made out for us. It can be frustrating. It can be discouraging sometimes, even as a saint in our walk with God. But we have to understand that if you are an individual that is saved, you're sanctified and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, God has a path that he has directed out for you. It's ordered. And so tonight I want to talk to you and encourage you because in this walk, again, it can be discouraging. And if you don't know where you are or what you're doing, I want to let you know that God knows what he's doing. God understands what you're going through and God understands where you are and where to take you. When God took uh, Israel out of Egypt, he knew exactly what he was doing. The scripture that we read in Numbers is that they got discouraged because of the way, the path that God had, 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 had made for them and, and he had called them. It, God knew what he was doing uh, when he had called them out of Egypt and he set them on that path because he had a place for them to go to. The Bible says that he took them out that he might bring them in. He didn't bring them out so that they can just wander around in the wilderness. Their wandering was their fault. And so God has a, a route for us. And he has a plan for us, and we don't need to be discouraged. And so tonight I propose to you that you can be assured in your walk with God and stay on that path. And just three things I'm going to mention tonight. Firstly, the way is ordered. The way that God has is ordered. Uh, there's two things I, I want to know normally, uh, and I've been wanting to know every time I get in the car, at least when I was little, I would ask, where am I? Or where are we going? And am I there yet? That those are the questions of the backseat driver and of little kids all over the nation. Where are we going? And are we there yet? And are we there yet is kind of a silly question oftentimes because if you're still in the car and it's still moving, you're probably not there yet. But we want to know anyway. And so that's for you little kids. Stop asking. If you're still in the car and it's moving, you're not there yet. But where we're going... Maybe you want to know that. And that parent may or may not tell you that question. i give you that answer. But we want to know these things from God. We want to know oftentimes where are we and where am I going? Because I can't really tell exactly where I am right now. And sometimes I can't even really see where exactly I'm going. But the scripture tells us that in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So our walk is very different. It's not like. Uh, God is telling us all the time, okay, this is where you're going to go next. And, and this is what it's going to look like. He's just saying, just keep walking because I have a way that I've ordered out for you and your steps are directed by me. But oftentimes we at least want to know where am I? So we'll get into a place in our life at times and we don't understand where we are. We don't understand why we're here. And we want to know those things. A lack of sight, uh, oftentimes can bring about uncertainty. And uncertainty oftentimes bring about fear. And because we don't know where we are or where we're going next, we can get scared. And really fear is the opposite of faith. Because if we understand what we're doing and who is guiding us, we wouldn't have any fear whatsoever. If we can have an understanding of who is doing what, then we won't have to worry about where we are. Because if God has ordered my steps and wherever I am, God brought me here. And I don't have to be afraid. And I don't have to be scared. In our text in Psalms chapter 37, in verse 23, that word ordered uh, could be used a number of ways. It has a, a variety of applications. I'm just going to read a few of them. It can be used as a established, fixed, prepared, apply, appoint, render, sure, proper, or prosperous, certain, certain, con confirmed, direct. Faithfulness, fashion, fasten, firm, be fitted, be fixed, frame, be meet, ordain, order, perfect, make preparation, prepare, provide, make provision, make ready, right. It's ordered. So the way that God has made for us, you can apply it here in all these things. The way that I walk and the way that God has, has brought for me at, it's not like it's something that's just haphazard. It's not like I just got saved and I'm just trying to find my way 
to heaven. I'm not just trying to find my way. When God called me out of darkness and brought me into marvelous light, he had in his mind a foreknowledge of where I was supposed to be and where I was supposed to be going. Because it's like with our global positioning systems, it, it already has it all mapped up. I don't have to really try to figure it out. Sometimes I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying as I'm driving, well, I think there's a better way. I, I think I should go this way instead. I've, I've driven this route. I've, I've rode, rode around this city a number of times. But, but, but I, I think this is the best way. And I might go into a dead end because I thought that was a shortcut. Or I thought this was, was the best way. But the global positioning system, because of where it is it, it, and, and what it's, how it's set up, it's already mapped out. And all I really need to do is listen to my, go, my guided um, system, the voice that's talking to me and telling me, turn left here. And in 30 feet, you're going to turn here. And this feet, you're going to turn there. It doesn't matter if I've never been there before because it can see things that I can't see. Well, with God, it really doesn't matter if I've ever been there before. It doesn't matter because God has been there. God has already mapped it out. It's already ordained. He's made this thing for me specifically. That's the thing about this walk. It's specifically and it's tailor-made for each individual. It's not like this individual, this walk is going to be the same exact thing for everybody. It's appointed. It's handpicked by God. It's prosperous. It's guaranteed to succeed. God has made this walk that we are walking. He made it to succeed. And so you don't have to worry about will you succeed. Some people get scared about getting saved. I don't think I'm going to make it to the end. You got to know that your steps are made to be prosperous. God made them so that you would succeed. Every step that God has given us, he's given us that next step. So it can be a step to cause us to pr prosper and to succeed in whatever we're doing. So you don't have to worry about it. It's, a, it's, it's prosperous. It's already prosperous. What I need to be focusing on is staying on the path. Because God has made it to be prosperous. And so why am I afraid? Why am I fearful? Why am I questioning every step? It's going to be prosperous. I just need to stay in step. And stay in tune. It's firm. That means it won't collapse. That means I'm not going to say, well, if, if I step here, it, it's, I'm probably going to fall through. We're worried about if, if it's going to be safe. What, what do you think God has brought you out so you can, and set a trap for you? God's not setting a trap on this way for us. God has set this way and he's made everything firm. Even if it doesn't look firm, if it's not firm, by the time my foot gets there, it's going to be firm. Because he'll uphold me with his hand. The Bible says it's also fixed, which means it can't be altered. That means it can't be altered by you or the devil. Because sometimes we want to change and alter our steps. Well, I don't think this is working out so well, God. So here's what I'm going to do. And you're going to, he's going to acquiesce to it. But no, he's not. Because when he made this thing, he made it perfect from the very beginning. And it cannot be altered. It's fixed. So whatever, whatever step he's telling you, if you're out of step, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to put your feet right back where they were and get back in line. Because he's not altering or changing the steps. Furthermore, it's framed. It has limitations to it. You have limitations. So sometimes we feel like, well, this thing is just too narrow. That's absolutely right. But the narrow way is the great way. Because here's, here's what I, I was reading something at one point in time re regarding Old Testament. Um, and, they, and they were talking about uh, how some of the kings would travel. Some of the kings, would, when they would travel somewhere, they would travel in between um, mountains in such a way. Um, that it was not easy for anybody to kind of go off track. But, but what it did was it kept the king safe because as much as there wasn't a lot of room to move, it was hard for anybody to ambush them. And so that was a good thing. So even though it was a narrow way and it wasn't always the most convenient way and it wasn't the smoothest path to take, but it was the safest way. What God has for us is a frame way. It's a way that's narrow and there's not a lot of room to move, but it's the best way because the devil just can't come in and surround me like that. Not that easily. It's not going to happen. He's only going to be able to come at me one way or the other and God is protecting me on both sides. And so I'm going to be able to make it through this way because it's a frame way. Sometimes we want to get out of that way. Well, God, I don't think it takes all of that. I need more room to move. You don't need extra room because extra room means that you can have extra company. I don't need extra company. I'm just trying to make it pass. 
I just need to make it through safely. I'm just trying to get to my destination. I'm not trying to do anything extra. I got something in sight. And if it's a narrow way, it doesn't matter because that's the way I'm trying to go anyway. And furthermore, it's perfect. It's flawless. You're not going to add anything to it to make it any better. You need, don't need to ask God, can you change this or change that? Because he has made it perfect from the very beginning. And so because the God that we serve is perfect, because the God that we serve knows what he's doing, because the God that we serve is the one that created the way, then we can have faith in the way because God has made this way. God has ordered my steps. Sometimes we're scared because we're just thinking we're stepping blindly. We're not stepping blindly. We're stepping where God has already ordained. The Bible says, in the book of Proverbs that a man will think about a way that he should go but God is the one that directs his steps so you may have in your mind where you think you ought to be going but God is saying no 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 listen I'm directing your steps I'm putting your feet here and I'm going to put your foot there you just need to have enough faith to believe that I have a desired end that I'm trying to get you to and stay on task because this ordered way has a purpose it has a purpose to it it's not only that God um, has, has ordered our way, but our individual ways have purpose for us. We consider Israel's journey. Uh, Israel, before it became a nation, uh, started with one man by the name of Abram, who was later named Abraham. And Abraham um, lived initially in Ur of the Chaldees, and he was a Syrian. And um, the Lord called him out. And the Lord told him to go into a land that he didn't really know of. And so the scripture says in Hebrews 11, by faith, Abraham left and went and he obeyed God. But he kind of bounced around a little bit. He ended up in one place and another place. And uh, he, he visited over into Egypt. And now that there, he ended up um, in Canaan. And now here he is now. Of course, the Lord at some point in time was really wanting uh, Israel, which was um, uh, really the, the children that would come out of Abraham's loins, they would eventually take over Canaan. But Abraham was in Canaan, um, but as he had children and so forth, eventually the Lord took them out of Canaan and sent them back into Egypt, which seems kind of weird because the Lord wanted them to be in Canaan. But here's the problem. While they were in Canaan, and this is his now grandchildren and great-grands and all of those folk, um, the children of uh, Jacob. Well, while they were there, they weren't really changing Canaan. Canaan was probably changing them or having a greater effect on them than they were having on, on Canaan. Judah, who, you know, um, which is who the Lord came out of um, the loins of Judah. But, but Judah was sleep, trying to sleep with prostitutes, or he was, and he, at least he tried, but that probably means he probably did sleep with prostitutes. And uh, somebody else started killing some folk and, and all types of things. And things weren't really going well with these patriarchs. Things weren't going great. And so by way of a famine, the Lord really drives them out into Egypt. And of course, in Egypt, he had already prepared a way um, for them to survive there through Joseph. Now they're there, but they're probably getting comfortable because they had everything that they needed in Egypt. Uh, but so eventually what the Lord did, he drove them out of Egypt by way of persecution. So they would say, you know what, God, get us out of this place. Because it wasn't the will of God that they stayed there either. And then eventually, of course, they made it into the wilderness in which they complained and a lot of people died. And then after that, they went back into Canaan and then they began to take over territory. And so that was their way. That was their way. But then the thing about what God wanted for them to establish in them, they didn't have initially, which is why he had to drive them out. At least three things happened in all of this, at least going through the wilderness back into Canaan, three things that they had to learn. They had to be established as an independent nation because they didn't have that. They were nomadic. They were individuals that just went bounced from place to place and they didn't really know how to be in one spot and develop anything for themselves. When they were in Egypt, well, they were uh, dependent on the Egyptians, which is why when they were in the wilderness, they would complain, well, we should go back to the Egyptians as if the Egyptians were taking good care of them. But they had this dependency on them. And so they didn't really have a, an ability, ability to take care of themselves. While they were in the wilderness, they had to establish at least that. Furthermore, um, because of these various nations that they were in contact with, and you can imagine over 400 years or so in Egypt, um, they would have had to pick up a lot of uh, the, the, 
the, the methods and, and the things that the culture of the Egyptians being in there so long. Uh, most of them only knew, actually all of them only knew of God through a, um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So they would talk of God as, oh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but it wasn't anything personal. But in the wilderness, they were separated and they had to depend solely on God. This allowed them to have a relationship with God for themselves. Because when we walk with God, we're going to have to develop a relationship for, with God for ourselves. It can't be because of our mama and our daddy or because of our pastors and because of our leaders. We have to de develop that for ourselves. And so they had to do that. They had to learn to trust God. And then thirdly, at least the third thing that they had, they had to drop off what they learned in Egypt. So in 40 years, everybody that was born in Egypt died in the wilderness, except for two people. But everybody else died in, in the wilderness and those individuals that was born in the wilderness then they went over into Canaan and they took over Canaan and so they had to take before they were able to be conquerors before they were able to be somebody that was going to be able to take over Canaan they had to beat they had to have some structure and it was because of the way of the wilderness they were able to establish those things was as I said before the GPS system um it has a route, but it determines first where you are to determine how to get you where you need to go. Let me just make it plain. Now, if I want to invite somebody here to New Life Tabernacle, I'm going to have to give them directions, first of all, because they'll see us from the highway, and then that's about that, unless they have a GPS system. But if they have a GPS system in their west, the GPS system will say, this is what you need to do based on where you are. So if you're coming from my house, it's going to give you totally different directions if you're coming from UPC, um, Plant City. Completely different directions. We're trying to get to the same spot, but the thing about it is we're located in different places. If you're in Wesley Chapel, it's going to give you totally different directions. I can't give you my directions from my house and you're going to get there correctly from um, Plant City or Brandon or Wesley Chapel. It's simply not going to happen. It's going to give us all in the directions independently based on where we are. So God will look at where you were before you got in the church. And what he'll do, he'll map out a course from where you were so that we can all make it into heaven. This is why we don't need to be looking at some people and saying, well, how come she ain't got to go through this? And why he can't got, he, he don't, it seemed like I'm the only one. You might be the only one going through what you got to go through because you're the one that need to drop off some stuff that you picked up, picked up where you were. This is, this is not a all, this map, this is for everybody. So I need to stop looking at everybody else. I need to say, God, I know you know where I, listen, there's people in this church. You may know something about me, but you don't know exactly where I was. You don't exactly know exactly how my mindset was. Only God knows that. And God is trying to get me somewhere. So what he's going to do, he's going to allow me to go through some wilderness. He's going to make a way that, that in that way, I'm going to have to learn to depend on him for myself. He's going to have me stop at places in my way, my personal way, that's going to deal with my personal mess and deal with my personal stuff so that I can drop that stuff off. So sometimes you're wondering, why am I going through this? Lord, get me out of this. And God is saying, no, it's part of your way. And you're going to have to drop off some stuff. It's only about, listen, the, as a matter of fact, personally, there's some things I didn't know about myself until I got in the way. It was because of the way some things were exposed about me that I didn't even know were in me. But thank God for the way. Now I know I got this issue and that issue and I just simply need to deal with those things. So that's why sometimes you're broke so God can let you uh, learn how to depend on him and him alone and let you know that godliness with contentment is great gain. It's not about money. It's not about fame. It's not about those things. You need to learn sometimes. You need to be taught. And it's only because of the way. It's ordered by God. It's situated by God. It's planned by God. And sometimes we're trying to get out of the way. Listen, those cars, you, 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 can, you can tell that GPS system, listen, I refuse to do what you're telling me to do. I think I got a shortcut. But if you run into a dead end, it's your fault. And you better hope that thing knows where you're at. Because that satellite system isn't always perfect. That, that, that 
3G or 4G or whatever you got, it's not always perfect. So what you simply need to do is trust that thing and let it tell you where you're going. I just simply need to trust God and say, listen, you're better than the GPS system because those things don't always work. His situation is much higher than this. As a matter of fact, one scripture says this. It says that he rides the heavens of heaven. So he's even higher than the heavens. He's in a place where he can see things that I can never see. And he'll tell me, listen, you need to go left. And my response needs to be saying, yes, Lord, I will go left. Because that is your way. That is your route. And it's ordered. It's perfect. It's firm. It's framed. It's not going to move. It's not going to fail me. And so I'm going to stay on the way. His positioning is good. And so the way is best. It's the best way. There's no better way. You're not going to come up with a better way. Your position is wrong. You can only see so far in front of you. God is the only one that can see around the corners and around the bins and around the, he knows where the dead ends are. That's why we run into so many dead ends in our life because we refuse to listen. We can't take any shortcuts. There is no shortcuts. We simply need to go by the way. And know that this thing is ordered by God. So where am I? I don't know where you are, but thank God. We got a God that knows exactly where you are. And he knows how to get you exactly where you need to be. So, well, where am I going? Just trust him. Just believe him. Just worry about the next direction. Because if you get it all in your mind, you might get confused. God, just listen, just relax. Listen, this thing is about faith. To just live by this faith. We're going to survive by faith. I'm just going to listen to what God told me to do. And I simply need to do it. It's predetermined. And then lastly, ordered steps guarantee success. Because if the way is guaranteed... Then success, then, then me making, making it to my destination, then me being successful is a guarantee. It just makes sense to me, reasoning. I, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, well, if this guarantees it's not going to fail and, and nothing can take me off of this thing except for me, if I stay on it, then I'm going to make it to the end. The Bible says this, it says, he that endures until the end shall be saved. But you just got to endure and stay on it and you will be saved. You will have success. Numbers 14 and 22 through 24 says, Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall come, I'm sorry, surely sh they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. When he brought them out of Egypt and was taking them into Canaan, he had this way. But in the way, again, they had a lot of tests and trials and things that would really force them to, tr uh, to, to trust God. And they would begin to complain, and uh, nine times they had complained, and God, why this? You sent us here to die. And they, they just back and forth with God. And sometimes I looked at that in times past and say, man, what's wrong with these people? And then I kind of hear the Lord say, well, thou art the man. Sometimes, I, sometimes we just need to just apply scripture to us. Sometimes I just did that. We need to do that. Some, well, no, I don't know why they do it. Same reason why I did it. And same right reason why some of us have done it. I'm not going to point you out. But you just need to do some introspection sometimes. And let the word clean you. But the tenth complaint was the kicker. It was the one that made God say, that's a wrap. And what was the difference between the first complaint and the tenth complaint? Furthermore, do, do, did I mess up ten times and I'm out? Is that what that means? I think the, 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 what the tenth complaint was all about was really the issue. Because the tenth complaint, um, they had gone, the Lord had sent... Uh, told Moses to send some spies into Canaan to spy out the land. So 12 spies had gone in there and they looked at the land and they saw everything that was on the land. And then uh, 10 of the spies came back and said, man, look, there's giants in the land and they got people all over the place. It's, it's not happening. It's simply not happening. And they said this. They said, we looked at them and we were but grasshoppers in our sight. 
we looked at them and we, then we looked at ourselves and we said it can't happen because we're, we're just grasshoppers. Whereas two other individuals, Caleb and Joshua, on the other hand, in Numbers 13, it talks about how they said, well, no, no, we can, we can do this. Surely we can do this. God, God, we're more than able to do it. So what was the issue with this 10th complaint? Well, here's what I think what happened is they begin to look at themselves and forget who made the way. They forgot who brought them out. They forgot who brought them to that place. They forgot who, been, who had been sustaining them that whole time. And they begin to say, I can't do it. And so when we get to a place where they say, it's impossible, we can't do it. God says, well, if you think you can't do it, then I can't help you. And so here's what you're going to do. You're just going to just have to wander around in this wilderness until you just drop dead. Sometimes we need to look at this walk and say, well, God, I'm not going to say I can't make it. I don't care how hard it gets. Here's why. Not because I'm strong. Not because I'm mighty. But I got to remember the one that brought me out in the first place. The one that brought me out, he's the one that's going to bring me in. And so... What I'm going to tell God is in all of those mess ups and all of those complaints and all of those things where I found myself to be lacking, you make up the difference. And so surely you can bring me in. Surely you can bring me to the end of this thing. Surely I can overcome. Listen, what we need sometimes is simply the mindset of Joshua and Caleb and say, surely we can do this thing. Not because of us, not because of who I was, not because of who I am right now. It's because of who God is and who God has always been and who God always will be. And so I'm going to trust in the way maker. I'm not going to look at the way. I'm not going to look at my enemies. I'm not going to look at my trials and situations and make them so big. But what I'm going to start doing, I'm going to look at the one that put me on this path in the first place. God, if you put me on this path in the first place, you're going to bring me to the other side of this path. It doesn't matter if giants are in my way because if you brought me here, you must have a plan for the, the, the giants. If you brought me this way and there's some issues coming my way, surely you have a plan in sight. I told you about that car that, that can see in front of it. What it does is it's, it's, so, it's, so, it's, it's, it's so accurate. It can look like 90 yards or so ahead of you, see a pothole, adjust the car's um, uh, suspension system so when it goes over the bump, you don't even feel the bump. What God does, he's not removing the bumps in the road, but what he'll do is he'll look far ahead and he'll plan for it and he'll adjust our spiritual suspension system so that we'll go over the bump, but we'll make it over the bump, but it won't feel as bad. It won't hurt as bad. It won't jolt us as bad. We'll go over that thing and the water won't even tremble in our car because God has adjusted us. The issue, ha what happens, we stop trusting in God. We'll see the bump at the last minute, try to swerve out the way and get into a wreck with somebody. You simply need to go over the bumps in life. Life has bumps. Life has problems. But God knows about it long before we get there. God knew that you were going to have this problem. God knew you was going to go through this situation. But your steps are ordered by God. And so you're going to make it through. Then you're going to make it past it. It's not as bad. I realize it's only bad when I try to make adjustments. So that, listen, I'm just being real with you. I, I, I was praying about this thing. I was crying because I said, my God, I, I'm really realizing all the stuff that was really bad. It was because of my fault. It was my fault because I was trying to find another way out. I was trying to find another. If I just would have stayed on track. It wouldn't have wasted so much time. Stop wasting your time. Just stay on course. And God will bring you through. God will bring you out. Stop trusting in your own ingenuity. Stop trusting in what you used to do. Don't look back at those things. Just stay on task. Yeah, you might feel a bump. Yeah, it may look bad. It may be a storm brewing. But stay on course. God controls the storms. God controls the path. God controls. He knows if a pedestrian is about to come into your path, he'll make the adjustments in due time. It might be at the last minute, but you will make it out. I was, this is my last portion of this last point. I, when I was, um, I initially had gotten saved, uh, for years I was having this recurring dream. <laughs> and in the dream, and it was different settings, but I was always on the road and I'm driving. And, um, and I was in the, the, the 
uh, driver's side. Sometimes there'll be somebody next to me. But, I mean, there's a lot of these same dreams, different roles and stuff. But, but here's the thing. I was blind driving. I couldn't see. And I would have these over and over. I'm like, man, what in the world is wrong with me? And I'd be panicking in the dream, swerving all over the place. I'm like, oh, God. I'm a, I mean, some of our, I remember like it happened literally yesterday or something. I'm swerving all over the place. And I'm driving, I'm driving. Until this last dream that I had had regarding that. I was driving, I was like, oh God, oh God. But as much as I physically couldn't see, I always saw the road. I was driving in this last dream, I was on the college campus, anyway. And um, I'm driving, and the Lord said to me, but you know where you're going. You can't physically see, but you know what the road looks like. You know everything ahead of you. What are you panicking about? And then I woke up and it dawned on me. It was almost like, you're better off not being able to see with your eyes. And then the Lord showed me this. He says, you never crashed. All of those dreams, you panicked but never crashed. Here's the thing with God. You might not be able to see. And you may look like, man, my God, this is about to be horrible. But you're sitting here because you haven't crashed. You're still around. So, so here's what God let me know. Relax. Relax. He got it all under control. If you listen, the only reason you're having problems is because you're panicking for nothing. You're panicking about nothing. God is in control of the car. You may think you're in the driver's seat. You may think you're directing your own steps. But God is the one that's directing your steps. And so you're panicking for nothing. You're bringing about the anxiety for absolutely nothing. Because God has it under control. Well, Brother Lim, you don't understand. It's a sickness. Don't you know that he can heal? God knew you were going to be sick. You just need to relax. Calm down. Let him take control. It's your swerving all over the place. You just need to let God get the wheel and let him direct your path because it's ordered. And whatever he does, it's going to be perfect and it's going to be prosperous. It's going to work out because God is in control. Stop trying to take control of the wheel. But I can't see where I'm going. Good. Because if you saw where you were going in the spiritual, you would probably stop off in places you have no business going. But if God blinds you and he just takes control of the will, it'll be all right. So my message to you tonight, to me, is good news. It lets me know I can go ahead and have, go have, go ahead and have a good night's sleep. I can just go ahead and relax because God already got this under control. Well, but they're saying they're going to do this. That's all right. God has already got this thing under control. But my family's acting crazy. God has put me on this path and it's God, he's got it under control. He knows what he's doing. He knows exactly. He's already planned it out long before you got here. He doesn't even need your, 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 he doesn't need anything from you. He doesn't need you to tell him anything. He doesn't need any guidance from you. He's already mapped it out. Just stay on course. Somebody needs to make up in their mind tonight. And listen, it doesn't matter what happens. I'm simply going to stay on course. I'm going to stop worrying about where I am. And thank God that he got me here. And he's going to take me. Listen, maybe we need to ask, since I'm here, what do I need to do here? Why don't, until, so I can go ahead and get back on track. Stay on, on track. Stay on course. God has planned this thing out. It will work. And you're not going to crash. You're not going to fail. You're going to be all right. Simply relax and trust God. Man, this is great news. Now I can relax my faith. Faith is a wonderful thing. Faith will allow me just to sit down, calm down, and trust and believe in the hand of the Almighty God. I believe them enough to bring me out. I need to believe them enough to bring me in. And you can stand. I just think it's good news to know it. I'm excited to know that my, my way will be a guaranteed success. And my only responsibility is to trust God enough to stay on track. To stay on this path. To stay in this way. It's ordered by God. And it's going to be all right. It's going to be just fine. And so you just tr simply trust in God. Believe God. 
But Brother Lim, you know, I, I did this. Listen, get back on track and stay on track. And God will direct your path. He'll make it prosperous. He'll make it work out.